Hi, I'm Celine Rousson. I'm one of the programmers for the Palm Springs Short Fest. Thank you for joining us for this conversation with Farah Nabalsi, the director of the present al -Hidayah. Uh, thank you, Farah, for being here this morning. Um, I'm really excited to talk about your film. You've been shortlisted uh, for the Oscar for the um, short live action. Congratulations. Uh, so I would just want to start talking about um, your career as a director, since I believe this is your directorial debut. And you've had quite an unconventional path to filmmaking. So I was just wondering if you could just expand a little bit on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my background, like you said, I'm, 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 uh, I come from a more corporate business background. Um, I didn't go to film school, so no traditional or formal uh, training in film. Um, and I didn't work in the industry, actually. But uh, a few years back, I had what I call a life changing trip. Um, to Palestine. So I'm, I'm Palestinian by by heritage, I was born, raised, educated in the UK and in London. But I, I go to Palestine. And long story short, I, I, I felt compelled to tell these human stories. I, I, I felt compelled to express myself creatively. Um, and I've always loved film. Um, and I've always been the storyteller and, and always had this very sort of vivid, visual, verbal imagination. And um, I had written some pieces kind of uh, therapeutically, personally, privately, but I decided to adapt them. Um, so I, I wrote and produced a few short films. And then that brings us to the present, quite literally the present time and the present film, where I decided that I really wanted to direct my first film. I could see so clearly in my mind's eye the whole world of the present. And um, everyone was saying to me, why aren't you directing? And I said, well, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't have formal training in this. And I, I got over a bit of my imposter syndrome, if you like, where it was like, okay, you don't have to have gone to film school to, to be a filmmaker, you know, you don't to direct a film. And it was Stanley Kubrick, the great Stanley Kubrick, who said the best education in film is to make one. So I kind of jumped in head first in the deep end and it was a sink or swim you know, <laughs> situation, and um, and then and the film was born. So I, yeah, I don't have a traditional kind of trajectory in, in filmmaking, but I've got the bug. I'm I, I love it, and um, and hopefully people love my film. I mean, in the sense that yeah, we have been shortlisted for the Oscars, and and we won two great uh, awards at at Palm Springs and uh, Short Fest. So um, I hope I'm on the right track, telling stories that interest and intrigue people and give them that emotional journey and I'm, I'm you know hopefully gonna move on to my debut feature that's exciting I hope. um I want to talk a little bit more about the narrative so you mentioned that you got inspired and uh, narratives about crossing the wall to anyone who pays attention to films from the region this is becoming a topic that we see more and more um, I'm thinking about 200 meters. That was Gordon's uh, entry. It was about crossing, and even the director, I mean, Nefe, who, was, who also did a short about crossing the wall as well. So it is obviously part of the daily life, daily experience of Palestinians. But I was just wondering how uh, you wrote the narrative. What exactly uh, brought you to this particular situation where this husband uh, is just simply trying to run errands and trying to buy a present? for his wife, and you also wrote it with a writing partner. Is that right? Yeah. So, um, so first of all, the present, what's interesting is that it's not about actually crossing the wall. Um, it's based on the checkpoints that exist in the West Bank in Palestine. So not in the 78% um, of historic Palestine that you know, you know as, as Israel, this is in that remaining 22%. There's over a hundred checkpoints there. Um, and another over 100 flying checkpoints that can appear anytime, anywhere. So there's no border crossing here, actually, in terms of they, they are literally in the villages and outskirts and um, rural areas and even towards the city centers. So um, uh, it, it, it's dealing with that issue. Um, now, I, I co-wrote the script, I wrote the story, co-wrote the script with Hin Shafani, who's a seasoned filmmaker in her own right. Um, it was based, uh, like inspired, if you like, 
on my own personal experience at these checkpoints and witnessing Palestinians at these checkpoints and having conversations with Palestinians who literally live this frustrating, exhausting, um, undignified process every day. And there's one young man that I, I know very well now, I've gotten to know him over the last few years, and he lives in Hebron and he lives in an area and on a road where literally around 80 to 100 meters from his house, there is a checkpoint. So no matter where he wants to go, who he wants to see, what he wants to get, um, him, his mother, any other Palestinian on that road actually has to go through a checkpoint. So sometimes two, three, four, five times a day. So you can imagine that is an extremely frustrating way to live your life, you know. So that's what inspired it. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix. It's a mix of my own personal kind of experiences and, and observations, as well as this particular young man's life. Totally. Um, it's a very, what I personally really liked is that it's very undramatic. It's a very mundane situation. Like you said, he's just trying to go about his day. And just trying to do something so i was just wondering how you built the character because a lot is on his shoulders a lot ha it relies on him and the performance to actually build the anxiety because there is no ticking clock he doesn't have like a time to be on the other side of the border nothing is really happening that day it's just a very regular day he's just trying to go home and yeah i was just wondering how you built his character and and then maybe if you can talk about uh, the casting process, because Saleh Bakri is obviously uh, an actor we've seen. We've had him in another short at Short Fest a few years ago, uh, but which was bomboning also from uh, Palestine. And I was just yeah wondering how you built his character and how everything, the whole pacing of the film relies on his performance. So you know when when writing this this the script and and you know the story. Um, it, I, I went on the basis of normal person, normal person anywhere in the world, right? Uh, you, you go out to, to, to buy a gift and you have the rat race of life regardless. Forget where, forget Palestine now. It's, it's you know, you, you, know you, you have a child with you. Um, I have kids. Um, the number of times my kids have been with me and they needed the bathroom. The number of times I had to run an errand and I had a headache or a, or a neck pain or a, you know, normal natural things in life where you, 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 you go about your business. But usually there's some kind of solution you know to, to these things whether it's the painkillers or grab a taxi hail a taxi or order something online instead or you know so the basis was he's just a normal guy trying to live a normal life you know running a normal errand uh with his child um and and that was the basis of that now you had to kind of add in okay you know this landscape um and what that landscape can do to a person throughout their day. And so really it was about getting to that climactic point of, you know, and, and I find this fascinating, you know, on the individual level and on the, on the, the, the bigger macro level of an entire population, you know, examining like how much dehumanization, how much humiliation, how much control can an individual or a collective take before they, snap you know given all the other issues in life that can cause stress and strain and everything throw in this landscape of of, of military occupation and soldiers and roadblocks and you know so with Saleh um who's an extremely seasoned actor not only was he in Bombone as a short he's been in in in, in multi-award winning feature films that have won in Cannes and in the Carno and he's 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 fantastic and when I was writing the the script with Hind she asked me you know who do you see as the character of Yusuf and I said to her I know directors aren't supposed to do this or writers aren't supposed to do this or directors really but I'm imagining Saleh Bekri. And really the world conspired because she said to me, I know him, let me introduce you. And she did. And so the script was sent, you know, directly from me to him by email. And then he read the script and, and he, he, he just loved the simplicity of the story. He totally could relate to the character. Um, Saleh has this 
dignity and this intensity that I think he brings to all his work. And, and that's probably why I imagined him actually as, as, as Yusuf. And he understood the trajectory of the character as well, or the arc, if you like, in that sense of, you know, he's trying to live a normal life, run a normal errand in a very abnormal situation that piles up throughout the day. And so that personality or that character has to, has to kind of take us on that journey. You know what I mean? Where slowly, slowly, we see the cracks, you know, and then eventually we, 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 we understand where he snaps, if you like. Um, well, so, we, yeah, know. it was coming for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I was uh, wondering about the ending. I thought that it was a very clever way of just diffusing the situation, but with keeping the pretty on dramatic, rather realistic setting of the whole film. There, it, the, the tension builds up, builds up, builds up. And honestly, I saw no way, no good ending with every, like, where everything would just quiet down. And I think that you successfully brought the, you diffused the situation, yet when they walk away, we're left thinking about the whole situation and it just lingers, the feeling lingers, yet nothing extraordinary happens. And I was just wondering how you came up with the ending, if it was ever different. And yeah. Just... <laughs> well, A, I'm happy you say that. I mean, um, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that that is what you were left with, this feeling of contemplation. So this is, this is wonderful. Um, so I'm sad to say that so this film is a fiction film, but it is completely based on, on a reality on the ground in Palestine today, in the present day. The most fictional part of the film though, sadly, is the ending, if you like, in the sense that I can tell you, you know, various variations of everything else that happened in the day in reality from stories and, and so forth. But when it comes to the, to, to the ending, I don't have a real life story to say that's happened before. And I'm sad to say that the usual more realistic outcome actually would or could have been um, lethal force, uh, physical injury, arrest. Um, uh, so yes, I did have the first, first time I wrote the story, uh, yes, there was a, a different ending and you can imagine what that ending might have been. Um, but, you know, once we kind of got through the first couple of drafts, uh, I, I wanted to offer something more hopeful, um, something like a suggestion, like an alternative, uh, perhaps that it's the youth that are coming out, you know, stronger or wiser than us stupid adults who have, you know, <laughs> made a big mess of things. Um, and that when she, when she does what she does, it kind of really makes a point of how ridiculous the actual real situation is where he's not allowed to use a road. I mean, when we want to talk about in this day and age and 21st century of discrimination and racism, and it's just ridiculous, you know? And so with a child, I think that that just resonates that so much more. Um, so yes, it, it, you know, and, and, and so that's, yeah, that's how it came. It was just this idea of, okay, we could end it in the extremely more realistic way, but I did want to offer something more hopeful. I am, I am drawn to the darker side of storytelling, even though I'm, I'm really quite a happy, <laughs> um, humorous person in real life. But when it comes to my writing and my work, I just tend to the dark, but as an ending, I wanted something more hopeful. And so, so we went with that, um, yeah. And that's how it ended up. No, it, it definitely adds some, because the film would have been obviously very powerful with um, unfortunately more realistic uh, ending, but it's using the innocence of the child to wrap the story and it does feel like an hopeful, a hopeful ending. And it just leaves, um, it leaves the viewer in a space that allows more contemplation than if it had something to do with a more violent ending that would leave yes. the in a completely different place. Exactly, exactly. And um, so the title in Arabic means present as in the gift. And I was just wondering like when you chose the title, which one did you choose first, the title in English or the title in Arabic? 
Because it, it's it funny, we have the two meanings. Yes, yes, exactly. It's funny. I mean, the original, original, I had two, three other titles before we even got to even this idea of the gift or the present or anything like that. Um, it was interesting because, um, so the, the working title um, was actually point of check. Okay, which also was supposed to have a double meaning of like, what's the point of the check and point of check and, you know, and, and that was fine because I knew I didn't need to really care what the title was till I was done, you know, and it was actually based on a conversation. I was sitting with Saleh Baki uh, on one of the evenings of, of shoot and we were discussing, you know, title because I knew that that wasn't necessarily the title I was going with. Um, point of check and we were discussing we were saying, yeah, the gift and I said, it's, you know, the gift is so Ah, it's, been, it's been used and it doesn't have yes that deeper meaning and all of that and we were saying actually the present of course the double meaning and I'm glad you've picked up on that not everyone would but yes it's the idea of the present a gift which yes translates to Arabic as al um, which doesn't have the double meaning in Arabic but of course the present time which is you know it is of the present time so yeah, it does have the double meaning and, and it was decided kind of halfway through shoot uh, in a conversation with, with Saleh and I. And uh, you've mentioned that you're working on your uh, feature debut. So can you say anything about it? Can you reveal some uh, little things or is it all under wraps for now? No, I mean, it's um, so we're in development. Um, it's a character driven drama thriller uh, about loss, about self absolution and fatherhood. Um, set in in the geopolitical landscape of, of Palestine, um, and uh, it's it's like kind of multicultural characters. The dialogue is around 60 70 percent in English, I think, and write in English. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'm excited about it. I want to make this film with every bone in my body, you know. And Saleh Bekki is already signed up and on board to play the main Sign protagonist. <laughs> he, he read the script he, he he loved the story and it's it's I, what i hope will be a powerful uh story and um yeah so we're already in the process we hope i've i've spoken to a few filmmakers from uh, palestine and they all say that there isn't really a palestinian industry the way we see it in europe in north america and i was just wondering how it was for you to uh produce a film especially since you're based in, uh, in the UK. How was it for you to uh, be there? You mentioned that you worked, uh, your co-writer is a filmmaker. So I was just wondering just about the process of shooting. You know, it's sad because, you know, the, the situation in Palestine is that, you know, uh, it, it's a struggling, um, it's a place on earth that goes through so much struggle um, that the film industry isn't exactly the priority, if you like, when it comes to even the cultural aspects of, of our society there. And so you don't get, for example, the grant funding and that kind of thing that you might in the UK and, and actually all over the world and in Europe and, and so forth. Um, and it's tough. And I think that the, 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 the people in the Palestinian film industry have done so super well considering the, the situation, but it always means that, yes, you're, you're generally having, having to go, you know, um, towards the West for, you know, funding and support. Um, I, I, for me, uh, you know, I put a bit, uh, you know, of, I put my money where my mouth was, if you like, a little bit. So I contributed to the funding of, of my work, as well as, yeah, raising it from, you know, family, friends, individuals who, who patron, if you like, film and, and telling stories like this. Um, and it's a struggle. It's always a struggle. Um, but also, you know, being from from the UK in that sense and and having access to to, to different individuals and, and professionals also means um, that now with the feature, I have a lot more options, you know, and I'm dealing with a UK producer. Um, we've got a great one of the top, you know, UK casting directors to to cast the Western roles on this feature. And so I, I'm kind of I've got my foot in both worlds. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm going to use it in that way. Um, and I'm appreciative of it. But I can see for a lot of Palestinians, especially living in Palestine, it is tough. It is really tough, honestly. So filmmaking is tough enough, you know, but you add all of that and it's. Yeah. 
another layer of uh, challenges. Exactly. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Farah. Thank you for joining us this morning for the conversation. Uh, good luck for the nominations. And, and yeah, I can't wait to see the future for sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Elise.